Okay, we have here today another integral. We've got the integral from one to infinity. Natural log x plus one over x squared dx. Okay, I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to use Feynman's trick on this, even though it's not necessary, right? Because what you could do on this is integration by parts. You could differentiate natural log x plus one. You could integrate, you could integrate one over x squared just using power rule. And it's going to work out fine that way. I think it's easier that way. I mean, usually, I guess integration by parts tends to be easier. So, so if you're in a rush, go ahead and do it that way. But for me, let's do this using Feynman's trick. So what I want to do is create another expression with a parameter on this. I'm going to create some function f of a, creating this new variable a. And how I want to do it here is, let's just rewrite this thing. And I'm going to create the parameter on the x. So we're going to turn this into ax plus 1 over x squared dx. And so we just noticed when a is 1, it's going to be the same as our original problem. So our goal is going to be getting back to just this f of 1 value for the 1 on the coefficient here. And one thing that's nice about doing it this way is it's going to be easy to get like a known value. Because you notice when a is 0, it's just going to wipe out this part. And you're going to have natural log of 1. Natural log of 1, 0. So then the whole integral is 0. So we have this known value. For f of zero, we're gonna say everything, we're gonna say this whole function is gonna be just equal to zero. So then I'm gonna go ahead and try to find a derivative on this, but we want the derivative with respect to a in this case. And how we're gonna do that is we'll integrate inside the integral sign, sorry, we'll differentiate. Whenever I'm doing a video in my mind, differentiate and integrate are like interchangeable. <laughs> so if I use the wrong one, try to like take it in the context, I don't know. I mean, really, I should probably try to do a better job with it, but. Anyway, for this 1 over x squared, that's just going to be a constant with respect to a. So we'll bring that out front. And then over here, we'll do the partial derivative with respect to a of this part. Then this is not going to be too bad. We have, we'll bring down this 1 over x squared. Now derivative here, we can first do it the way we normally would and just take the derivative of anything natural log is going to be 1 over ax plus 1. But then we need chain rule on this. The 1 parts is 0. Our derivative of ax is just going to bring out an x. And then I think that helps because we get some cancellation right here. We get to cancel 1x. And then here, this is an integral that we can do. We could do partial fractions. I kind of like to do it on the fly if I can, if I can just kind of create it without doing out the partial fractions. So how I'm going to do this, if I just create these terms in the numerator and try to create something that I can cancel with, like if I write it like ax plus 1 minus an x, that's not quite going to work because that's going to leave us with some x value here. If I do this as ax, then ax minus x, that's going to be 0. It just leaves 1, so we didn't change it. And so doing it like this is going to allow me to split this up into two integrals. So the first one, we're going to have this ax plus 1 on the numerator. So we get ax plus 1 over x, ax plus 1. So clear cancellation there. For this second one, I'll bring a out as a constant with respect to x, of course. So then here we're just going to have x x ax plus 1. So then we can just cancel here, 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 and here. And what's left is going to be two pretty easy integrals. So then just integrating this first one, we're going to have this is going to become natural log. Drop the absolute value because our um, x values are always positive. So it's just going to be natural log of x. I'm going to evaluate this stuff all together. So I'm not going to evaluate them individually. Then here, same kind of thing. We're going to have natural log Again, drop the absolute value, we'll have ax plus 1. But now we need this a to come out front in the denominator, so we'll have an a over here, evaluated from 1 to infinity. a's cancel here. And then I think maybe let's put these together so it doesn't look like two divergent pieces. So we'll have it as natural log x over ax plus 1 from 1 to infinity. Now when you plug infinity in here, the limit of this thing as x goes to infinity is just going to be 1 over a. So for this first piece, we're going to end up with natural log 1 over a. And then for the second part, we'll just plug in a 1 and we get natural log of 1 over a plus 1. And then I can clean this up a little bit. I don't think I'll put them together, but what we can do is because we have everything in the denominator, I can flip it and change the sign. So I can write this as natural log a plus 1 minus natural log of a. And so this right here will be our f prime of a value. Then now that we have our f prime of a value, we want to get back to f of a. Just remembering like this right here, our goal is going to be f of 1. 
So what I can do is we can just integrate this with respect to A. So on the left side, when you do this, this is just gonna become F of A over here. And then over here, we're gonna have an integral of this stuff with just with respect to A. And then here, I can just really use the formula on each of these. I mean, this, we can just use like our integral of ln x formula. We can use the same formula here. You could do like a u substitution right here, but because the derivative of this is just gonna be like one dA, the u substitution doesn't really do anything. So we can just kind of do it in their head and just kind of plug into the formula. So for this first part, we're gonna have a plus one natural log a plus one minus a plus one. I'll just leave it like this for now. And then we have the same formula on this piece. Let me kind of do it carefully. So this is gonna be a ln a minus a, and then we have a plus c on the end. Then just cleaning it up a little bit here, we're gonna have, when you distribute in the minus, we're gonna have a minus one, but we have a constant on the end. So the constant's gonna just absorb that one. Let's get rid of that. Then here, when we distribute in this minus sign, we get a plus a minus a, that's just gonna be zero. So that piece goes away. And so cleaning this all up for our f of a value, we have, we'll copy down this, a plus one ln a plus one minus a ln a plus c. And we come back and we use this condition that we established at the beginning because we want to get rid of this plus c. We're going to want here a numeric value without a c in it. So let's just see what happens when I evaluate this thing at zero and just plug in a zero. So here it's going to simple down, simple, this is going to simplify pretty nicely because this is just going to become one ln one minus. Then here on this, you're going to have zero natural log zero. Technically, so this is an indeterminate form. But when you have zero in front of the natural log, the zero is gonna be more powerful. So I'm just gonna put this in as a zero. And then we have our plus C here. Natural log of one, this is also zero. And this whole thing is equal to zero. So for this all to be true, we need our C value equal to zero. So what I can do is we can just get rid of this and then we've established our F of A value. So now to finish it off, we just come back to our original problem where we want F of one. The nice thing about Feynman's trick though is you kind of come up with a whole set of solutions usually, right? Because it doesn't matter now if this was ln like 5x plus one or whatever, we have a way to quickly get to the solution. So anyway, let's just evaluate at one and see what happens. So here we're gonna have one plus one is two, natural log two. Over here, plugging in, we have one ln one, but that all goes to zero. So we're left with two ln two. I think I'll bring that into the exponent. And so for my final solution of this, we have just natural log of four. Okay, so there you go. Kind of a fun problem with Feynman's trick, even though, like I said in the beginning, you don't really need it. But I don't know, Feynman's trick is pretty fun. So I like doing it. Anyway, thanks everyone for watching today. Have a good day.